This video is sponsored by AG1. More on them later. Huh. Achoo! Whew! Huh! Look at that! Okay, so two years ago, I made this incredibly cool but not very comfortable bulletproof ball gown out of Kevlar and carbon fiber, and unfortunately, it didn't fit me at all because of the way I made the form of my body, which was just to wrap myself in duct tape and fill that with expanding flotation foam, not taking into account the fact that my body is not perfectly round. So the result was this unidirectionally expanded model of a person and a dress that had to be made a lot sexier than originally intended in order to fit over my human-shaped body. So a really popular request that has been recurring for the past two years has been to try again, and this time do it with people who know what they're doing. I brought in the help of two awesome experts, Jason and Mel. They're both special effects artists in the industry, and we're gonna life cast my body. Okay, the, the challenge here that I think I'm most scared of is I've never had this little control over a project before, but like, I'm gonna be trapped in plaster, and so they're really gonna do most of the work. I'm just gonna stand here. <laughs> and I have to stand still. We are going to be doing a plaster life cast over some spandex clothing, which isn't the proper silicone life cast that these two are used to doing, but this is a family friendly channel and the more formal way involves being naked, so sorry. Jason did say they do this occasionally to build muscle suits really quickly or things that require a lot less detail than prosthetics and makeup for body props and stuff. We set up some poles for me to rest my hands on to keep them still during the plaster entombment process and then got moving. The first step was to paint all of my clothes in cholesterol cream, which is basically just a hair conditioner as a mold release so that we can pull the plaster off later. And then it was plaster bandage time. Plaster has a limited working time once it's been dipped in water, but these two work really fast. So one of my favorite things to watch is the way they build the seam in by just freehanding a structured lip with the plaster bandages. I feel like as a mechanical engineer, we always over-engineered the heck out of those to eliminate a parting line, but it's a good reminder that A, it doesn't matter in a lot of cases, and B, in this application, their professional priority is to get the actor out of the uncomfortable plaster as quick as possible, rather than to build a super fancy mold. So minimum viable product, folks. It's a really good lesson. And just like that, I've got the ugliest, most uncomfortable, and most expensive sweater that I've ever worn. I was looking for a who's there, but. <laughs> <laughs> and while I am completely entombed in plaster, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, AG1. Look, when you're cloning yourself, it's very important that your body is in tip top shape. Luckily, AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I'm talking gut health, immune health, focus and energy, healthy aging, stress and mood balance, and nutrient replenishment. And hey, those all carry forwards to your cloned foam self. Trust me, I know, because I have a bachelor's of science. That's actually not true, I have a BSE, so maybe take it with a grain of salt, because engineers don't really know anything. But engineers are good at numbers, and let me tell you, that's 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. Plus, it's NSF certified for sport to ensure the highest quality and safety of AG1. AG sources the best and highest ingredients it can find, and it's gluten-free, dairy-free, paleo, vegan, and keto, meaning you can safely bring it to any Los Angeles potluck. All you have to do is shake, stir, or otherwise mix your AG1 into eight to 10 ounces of cold water and drink away. I like mine with a squeeze of lemon dressed in my best plaster outfit. The team over at AG1 has worked hard to make sure it tastes as good as it does with over 52 iterations. You'll notice the subtle sweetness of natural pineapple and vanilla. And if you're on the go like me right now, there are also these super convenient travel packs so you'll never miss a day. Check out AG1 at my link below. That's drinkag1.com slash xylofoxalin. Now get me the out of this thing. Once I've been released, we quickly screwed the two halves together so that the plaster would fully cure in the correct shape where like the two halves fit nicely together. And this is usually more necessary than this case where they pull it off the actor as soon as it's rigid enough to do so. So it's still warm and it's still curing, except that I filmed the entire sponsor segment wearing it because I'm literally insane. So it was already pretty cured by the time we were doing this. Uh, it also made it a little harder to remove, but hey, it's what pays the bills, so. Fancy seeing you there.
The legs were pretty much the same, except that the feet got these fancy little booties. So it was a three part mold. And once it's cured, the bottom of the feet can be removed separately. So to separate the pieces at the seam, they just paint a general amount of cholesterol cream on the seam and then keep plastering over it. All right. Wow! Linear <laughs> put down. Ah, thanks. Beautiful. Perfect. Nice! She's free! <laughs> She's free. Oh my god, I get to do something. With the plaster forms done, Mel headed home, and Jason Karras and I set to making the foam Xyla, or Xylofoam, as I've started calling her. We started by mixing up a fast curing two-part silicone to paint in the inside of the plaster so that the foam we eventually pour in there will release. And again, the more proper way to do this is that the actor that's being life cast is nude or mostly nude and painted directly with the silicone and then the plaster bandages are placed over that. So then when you crack that open, you have the same like plaster lined with silicone, except that the silicone is like a perfect form of the body that includes skin texture and everything. So that obviously leaves you with a way more true to body final form than we have here. Also because skin doesn't sag and deform the way that the spandex clothing does. But hey, at least you got to see the whole process. Xylon lower half coming right up. <laughs> and then we did the same to my bottoms. Never thought I'd be smearing goo on my ass on the internet. But here we are. It's pretty weird because like I recognize this shape. Which is you. Yeah. It's like a lumpy version. Once the silicone cured, we reassembled the body molds and sealed all of the seams with this reusable wax-based clay. <laughs> so what we're going to do is take this clay, roll it into a snake, and then kind of just use it as if you were going to use like a five minute, like a boxy buddy. Uh, you really want to smash it in there and then like kind of seal it. A dumb looking pair of pants. All right, so this is a two part polyurethane foam. I have gone my entire life calling it flotation foam, and Jason has gone his entire life calling it polyfoam. It's the same thing rebranded, but um, it's great. And it's why, like, you'll see a lot of people using this to sculpt with and stuff. Next, I've mixed up the polyfoam, flotation foam, forbidden coffee, whatever you'd like to call this two-part polyurethane expanding closed cell foam, and we can start pouring it into the molds. A really cool trick I learned from Jason is to, and it seems so obvious now that I've seen it, is to use the foam as its own sealant. So to start, we poured a really tiny batch just down all of the seams to seal them off, and then we poured in lots of tiny batches to build up and make sure we don't blow open the mold. Honestly, I don't know why every single time I've poured this stuff, I've thought I needed to pour it all in one go. And once it's cooled down, we can crack it open and see how those legs look. Whoa. There you go. Silicone, dude. All right. Mold lips to see another day. The flashing is easily removed with a knife or a rasp, although the downside is once you cut the foam open, it no longer has that like really nice smooth surface, but a kind of itchy one. But alas, can't win them all. I guess I could probably seal it if I really wanted to. Come to me. Hello, would you like to dance? 
For the top, we did the same thing, but we did have to use a ton of clay in the neck hole just to seal off that entire thing. And then again, it was tiny batches started by pouring down the seams to seal them. Now that we had our general pieces, I wanted it to be a useful mannequin with removable arms and a removable leg so that you can actually get clothes and props on and off. That's a Zyla. So we drilled some holes and stuck some PVC pipes in that they can slide on and off. <laughs> What's you helping me gonna cost, Jay? Definitely about an arm and a leg. All right, one arm coming right up. <laughs> Will that do? That was perfect. All right. To permanently join the torso to the legs, we mixed up just a tiny bit more foam and used that as a glue. And then we wrapped it up in saran wrap to prevent leakage. And if I was really motivated, I could sand or carve it back down to my original waist size. But honestly, this stuff is kind of itchy and I wasn't sufficiently motivated. <laughs> wanted a twin. This is so fun. And that's it. Honestly, working on this project gave me so much more respect for like how much work goes into all of the costumes and prosthetics in the film industry. It's incredible. So all in to just duplicate my body, it took us about eight hours with two professionals helping and it was only about $500 in materials. A huge thank you to Jason for letting us use his shop and Mel for coming in and helping out last minute. Um, it was like so wonderful to work with these two people and Karis and I were talking about this earlier But it's like really nice to be working with people who are truly experts in the thing that they do Like I'm kind of building something new every month And so I don't have the time to, to get the depth of experience whereas like these two have seen it all So I will link their Instagrams in the description below and put them like Somewhere, but anyway in the meantime, let me know what you'd like to see me make with these forums in the comments below, because I now can make anything. Me and Xylophone are ready to take on the world.